Today we're going to have a look at how to prove identities. An identity is an equation where the left hand side and right hand side of the equation always equal the same value for all values that are defined. Now to prove an identity we use the left hand side and right hand side expressions separately and manipulate and simplify them until they equal the same expression. To do this simplification and manipulation, we need to know the following. Your basic trig identities, double angle identities, compound angle identities. And then for algebra, you need to know how to add or subtract like terms, multiply out brackets, add or subtract fractions, and how to factorize. Let's have a look at a few examples. When proving identities, it is always a good idea to start by changing all the tan functions to sin over cos and by changing double angles using our double angle identities into single angles. But to do all of this, we need to choose a side to start on. And it's always good to start on the side that seems as if it has more to simplify. And in example one, that is our left hand side. On our left, we can see that we have two functions that have double angles, sin 2 alpha and cos 2 alpha. I'm going to start off changing the sin 2 alpha because it only has one option of identities to use. For sin 2 alpha, the identity is 2 sin alpha cos alpha. And now when I focus on my numerator, I have cos 2 alpha. And for cos double angles, we have three options of identities to use. Therefore, I focus on the rest of the numerator, which only has sin alpha. And I'm going to then choose the identity that has sin in it. So cos 2 alpha will be changed to 1 minus 2 sin squared alpha. And then I also have the rest of my numerator. Now I can simplify that numerator because 1 minus 1 is 0. And both the numerator and denominator now has two terms. So once I've now used my identities, I need to factorize so that I can simplify further. In my numerator, the two terms have a common factor of 2 sin alpha that I'm now taking out and I'm left with 1 minus sin alpha. In my denominator, the two terms have a common factor of 2 cos alpha. And once again, I'm left with 1 minus sin alpha. And now I can simplify by dividing. So 1 minus sin alpha divided by itself is 1. And 2 divided by 2 is 1. This means I'm left with sin alpha over cos alpha. And using my identity, that is the same as tan alpha, which is my right hand side and that means I've proven the identity. In example 2 I have two terms on the left hand side of the identity that can be added up and on the right I have tan as well as a double angle that can be changed. I'm still going to however start on the left hand side where I can add those two fractions. Now when I add fractions I need to get a common denominator and if I look at the two denominators that I have I will need the first fraction's denominator, cos x minus sin x, as well as the second fraction's denominator, cos x plus sin x, in my new denominator. And now I need to change my numerators according to this new denominator. So the first numerator was cos x, and it was on the cos x minus sin x, so it still needs to be multiplied by the cos x plus sin x. My second fraction had the numerator minus cos x and was on the cos x plus sin x, so it has to be multiplied by the cos x minus sin x. Next up, I can simplify by multiplying in my numerator and multiplying out the two brackets in my denominator. In my numerator, I now have like terms. Cos squared x minus cos squared x is 0. And I'm left with cos x times sin x plus cos x times sin x, which is 2 cos x times sin x, or sin x times 
cos x. And now I need to identify my identities that I can use and both the top and the bottom here has a double angle identity I can use. In my numerator I have the right of the sin double angle so I can rewrite it as sin of 2 times x and in the denominator I have the right of one of my cos double angles so I can change that to cos of 2 times x. Next up I can use the tan identity. Tan x is sin x over cos x so in our case sin 2x over cos 2x will be tan 2x and that is my right hand side and I've proven the identity. In example 3 we now have an angle of 3 theta on the left and that is compared to only theta on the right. So I'm going to start on my left hand side and I'm going to try and rewrite that in terms of only theta. So on my left hand side I'm going to start off using a compound angle identity to break up the cos of 3 theta into 2 theta which I can later change with double angles and theta. Now I'm going to use my compound angle identity and break this up into cos of the first angle times cos of the second angle minus sin of the first angle times sin of the second angle. And if you look closely now you will see that we have two double angles and our right only has single angles of theta so now I'm going to use my double angle identities. For the cos double angle we now have three options again but if you look at the right hand side the right hand side only has cos theta so I'm going to use the double angle identity that has cos theta in it so that's 2 cos squared theta minus 1 and then my sin double angle is 2 sin theta cos theta. Next up I'm going to simplify my two terms so for my first term I'm going to multiply the cos theta in and in my second term I'm going to multiply the sin thetas and write it as sin squared theta. And now if I once again focus on my right hand side I will see that there's no sin theta so I'm going to use an older identity to change sin squared theta into 1 minus cos squared theta. Now my first two terms stay as they were and in my last term the 2 and the cos will be multiplied in so it's going to be minus 2 cos theta and plus 2 cos cubed theta. And now I have like terms that I can add up so I will have 4 cos cubed theta minus 3 cos theta and that is my right hand side. There are many different ways to prove the same identity. Sometimes you can even choose to work on the left hand side and on the right hand side until they both equal the same expression.